All right, welcome back. Uh, this is the second episode that deals with uh, this 1999 Articat ZR600. I rode it about 20 miles a few days ago and there's still some issues I'm having with it. Mainly from a stop, it just really doesn't go fast at all. It just sort of decides that it's going to start moving and then eventually, boom, the acceleration kicks in and... At higher speeds it really rips pretty well, but off the line it's just terrible. So there's a couple things I want to try to diagnose here. It might be a crank seal, it could be the clutches, but that's what I'm going to try to find out in this video. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to use some carb or choke cleaner. I'm going to spray it on both sides of the engine near the crank seals. So we'll see what happens. If the RPMs go up, that means I have a bad seal issue, which could be letting air into the engine that isn't coming through the carburetors, which can cause a lean condition, and then you can burn things up. Hopefully that's not what's happening. Alright, so that's good news because it means my crank seals aren't shot, the car boots also are pretty good. So something else is happening to this sled, my money is on the clutch. So we'll go for a ride in a minute here, but let's just look at the clutches before we do. So I'm definitely not a clutch expert here. This is a power block uh, clutch, this is not a stock clutch. My factory clutch had hairline cracks in the aluminum casting and was not able to be salvaged. So I had a snowmobile shop install this clutch, they said this will outperform your stock one. It's awesome whatever you can see on the wear marks on the sheaves here that this belt is getting up to about here I, I don't really think it should be going much further than that which leaves the secondary clutch maybe as a question mark I'm just gonna rev it a little bit see if it looks funky but it would be nice to be able to see what's going on when I take off I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet it's kind of dangerous to not have this shield on here but we'll see what we can do What I have been told is that I need to see how this thing reacts without any load on the skid whatsoever. So we just shoved a 4x4 under the back of the sled. I'm going to start it and we're going to rev it without the track touching anything and see how the sled responds. And you need to not be in front of the sled when I'm doing this. <laughs> bunch of stuff I'm going to do today. I'm going to check the belt deflection, the clutch clearance. So I want to start with the suggestion of looking at the belt deflection to see if my belt is too loose or too tight. The way you do that is you take any straight edge and you just put it on the belt like this and then you take a ruler and you push on the belt to see how much it moves. Now this looks really loose. It should be an inch to an inch and a half deflection. So I'm going to get 
my wood pressed in here and we're gonna push on this thing and see what we wind up with. Looks like maybe an inch and a half if I push really hard. I'm going to adjust my belt deflection because like I said, this should be between one and one and a half inches and we seem to be a little bit over that. So the way you adjust your belt deflection is by taking this bolt out and adjusting shims. The other way you can tell your belt deflection isn't set right is this, this belt right here is sitting too deep into these sheaves here. It should really be almost more like that where you can almost see the cogs of the belt. So basically this sheave needs to move closer to that one. So I'm gonna take this bolt out right here. So half inch socket. Okay, that isn't really what I was expecting. So at this point, I've tried a torch, an air hammer. I've tried beating on it with various instruments of destruction, but nothing is working. So I read about something on the internet where you jack up the back of the sled and you rev it up and then you hit the brakes with no belt on. So what that's gonna hopefully do, wait, would the belt need to be on? So I still haven't been able to get this secondary off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip the sled on its side and then soak it in croil. I'm still trying to pull this clutch. I had this entire sled tipped on its side for two or three days and I filled the end of the clutch with croil. I've been pounding on it. This is an old torsion bar right here from the 911 and I've been pounding on it from this side with a sledgehammer to get a full swing on it. I've also taken the mini sledge and just been smacking the the back of the secondary here. There's a couple options here if I really want to get it off. I could pull all this side plastic off, off the sled, like all the body work. I'd have to drill out all the rivets and pull all this off. Then I need to take apart the chain case, take the gear off, and apparently this whole jack shaft will just slide out. That's one option. The other option if I don't want to deal with the body work. So some of you guys commented that my engine is moving around too much. I do have new motor mounts here and here and under there somewhere. But one thing I did notice is I don't really seem to have an engine snubber, which I think is supposed to go right here. I ordered a new one. Here's what they look like. It's just a rubber pad with a threaded end. I'm gonna try to figure out how to install this. I might need to unbolt the engine mounts and lift the engine in order to get this in here. Cause otherwise I don't see how there's gonna be any space. So yay, more fun. We're gonna unbolt the engine quick. As usual, whenever you have some exhaust springs, uh, like a motorcycle or snowmobile or something, I just use a piece of copper wire and uh, vice grips and you just slip it in the spring here and compress it. In order to put in the snubber to keep the engine from moving around, I need to actually remove the engine or shift it forward to get the snubber in from this side. It goes on this bracket right here. However, I can't unbolt the engine mount under here because the primary clutch is in the way. So I'm going to take off the primary now, even though I can't get off the secondary, to remove the engine mount so that I can put in the snubber to prevent the engine from moving. Yeah, that's how it's going right now. All right, so now I have the sled jacked up, which is OSHA approved here, and I have the primary bolt loose. And what I'm going to do is take that puppy out of there, wrap it in Teflon tape, and then I'm gonna fill this hole with some oil or some water, screw this in here, and this should pop off the primary clutch, and then I can get to the engine mount, I think. Round two, I added way more Teflon tape this time. 
And this time I'm gonna use water because I don't feel like wasting a bunch of lubricant if this doesn't work. What the f***? All right, this time I used Teflon tape, not the uh, gas kind. And I decided instead of going really wide, I would just go the length of the entire threads. So the thought is then maybe that'll help it seal a little better and push a little harder. We're gonna try again with some water. All right, round three. This time I put a ton more Teflon tape on the front part of the bolt. We're gonna see if that seals up better. I'm going to try something thicker than water or oil. I'm gonna try just eng engine assembly lube. I don't see how this is working at all. It just seems like the bolt bottoms out instantly. Made a huge mess on my clutches. I have grease and water everywhere. And all I wanna do is install this one mother snubber so the engine doesn't move. All right, I have still not got the primary off. I read that if you put the tip from your grease gun all the way in there, which doesn't fit, so this is a stupid tip. Doesn't work. The grease gun doesn't fit down the hole, so we're just going to see if we can do that and just shove a ton of grease in there. It did nothing. It didn't come off. I, I don't understand. Every video on the internet says if you fill this hole with grease or water and thread the bolt in with Teflon tape, this primary is supposed to pop off. It's not happening. Why? Try it again. I'm just gonna do it over and over. Okay, again, it took all the tape right off those front threads which wound up doing jack shit because the clutch is still totally on here. Here is a bolt that has Teflon tape, just like all the other videos that say, if you put Teflon tape and water in here, it'll pop your clutch off. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna say it does jack shit. That's what I'm gonna guess. I didn't tighten the bolt all the way down last time. I have Yet more Teflon tape. I'm gonna go through all the rolls of Teflon tape I own, which are two, and they're both really new, to prove to you that this method does jack sh Went straight all the way down. Didn't pop it off. Did nothing. God damn it! How the f is this possible? F this sled.